Hello, I'm Matthew Malcolm with Pacific Net Producer Magazine, <coughs> reporting to you here today with Billy Sink from Project Apis M. You know, um, cover crops and almond orchards is becoming a, a more prevalent thing, especially with the, the benefits of making your almond pollination be more effective, right? Mm -hmm. So can you tell us a little bit about some of those benefits as well as some of the latest research out of UC Davis? Sure, yeah. So in the summertime, the bees have a cast system. Newly emerged bees, they're a nurse bee for about two weeks. Uh, for the next two weeks of their life, there's something called a middle age bee. They do a lot of in-hive tasks. And for the last two weeks of their life, they're a forager. They go collect pollen, nectar, water, propolis. Um, and then they, they live about six weeks in the summer. So this cast system breaks down in the winter. Uh, they are what, what's called a generalist bee. They don't really have any different activities. All they do is huddle together, keep themselves warm, keep the queen warm. Well, to trigger that colony in the spring to go back to their kind of regular way of doing things in that cast system, they need pollen. It's also uh, other signs in spring like day length, temperature. But the first available pollen that comes in, that tells the queen to lay eggs, and three days later those eggs hatch into larvae, and the larvae has a, a, a pheromone to it that tells the adult foragers in the colony that you've got to go leave the hive, you've got to bring back food because you have these this new core part of bees that will that will need that that nutrition. So uh, this will happen the first day of almond bloom, for example. But if you can get that to happen a few days, a few weeks, maybe even a month or two before the almond bloom, uh, by planting cover crops, and those bees are foraging on the cover crops, you get that that positive feedback loop starting much much earlier, and that way you're going to have healthier bees, healthier colonies, more populous colonies, and they're gonna be uh, more more vigorous, more vital, and they're just gonna attack those blossoms come spring. There's also a lot of health, uh, soil health benefits as well, but just in terms of the grower's desire to have better pollination, um, more pollen means more brood pheromone, and that just drives the workers out to go collect pollen and set nuts. Right, with that in mind, if you got some activity going before, before bloom, uh, would you recommend getting hives in a little bit earlier? When would you recommend putting the hives in? Well, in the cover crop? That, that, yeah, that's gonna that's gonna vary depending on the grower and beekeeper. Sometimes they, it works out that they come in right before. But if you are able to uh, bring those colonies in, um, they're gonna have a lot better health feeding on that cover crop than they would back home being fed some sort of protein supplement patty. Nothing wrong with that necessarily, but nothing is better than, than actual nutrition. And uh, some latest research out of the University of California Davis from Alina Nino has shown that um, colonies placed in orchards with a mustard cover crop have about three frames more bees than colonies in an orchard without. And I mean, a half a frame or a frame I think would be significant. I was I was shocked and pleased to see that it was three whole frames. Um, so that is, you know, that is a significant amount of bees that the, the, the grower can utilize, and the, uh, the grower will have those bees working for them. Okay, well thank you, Billy. Read more about these things in Pacific Nut Producer Magazine. If you don't receive it, you can subscribe online for free today. And best of luck with almond pollination this spring. I'm Matthew Malcolm, CaliforniaAgNet.com.